So yes, my name is Oscar La Sierra, and I'm going to present our paper, which is European Refugee Security in the Wild, Reality versus Expectation. So this is a joint work with Ginés García Viles, um, Esteban Municio, Xavier Costa, and Antonio Scarmeta. So when we heard about 5G, we often talk about lower latency rates and higher bandwidth, but which is, which is the situation regarding security? In other words, when this 5G icon appears on the top of our smartphones, are we actually secure? So to this end, what we did on our paper is basically fact check the actual 5G security in the European mobile network scenario, and then study the available security vulnerabilities in these commercial 5G networks. And then some of the relevant findings are that the transmission of the subscriber's identifiers is still done in clear text. Also, we found out lack of integrity and confidentiality in some messages bearing substantial information. Moreover, the networks are still exposed to 4G inherited vulnerabilities, and this is quite alarming. So this table shows um, our results, and as you can see, in your left side, you have the 5G security features presented by the standard. Then in the middle column, in the middle column, um, the, sta the standard com comp compliance of these um, features. And finally, in the right column, you have uh, the results of two operators and six different locations. And they are mainly red, so. <laughs> so why is it important to jump from 4G to 5G uh, security? Well, 4G um, came with several vulnerabilities regarding the permanent identifiers. Also, for um, temporary identifiers, there is no reallocation policies that specifies when this temporary identifier should be um, changed. Then we have lack of randomness in the authentication protocol. Then the user playing data lacks on control uh, on confidentiality and integrity protection. And the initial last messages, they are not really secure. So 5G came to solve these problems um, with these solutions. So the current status of state of 5G in Europe is, as is shown here. So in the former year, Europe has deployed several commercial 5G services, and two thirds of the operators uh, in this region have launched 5G networks. And in 2025, um, thir um, 311 million of 5G connections should be expected across Europe, and also a 40% of adoption rate. <clears throat> so for instance, this is a 5G network where we have a 5G user equipment, but how the network is really, how this transition is, is, is done. So we don't know. To this end, um, now we are going to, to, talk, to talk about the two different phases of this transition. So first, we have the 5G non-standalone deployment that uses a 4G network in order to establish the, the control plane security and the comp control plane environment while, while they use a 5G basis station to transmit the user plane data. So this means that in this scenario, we have 4G security, not 5G. Then the second, in the second phase of, the, of this trans transition, we have this network that um, both user plane and control plane data are going through a 5G standalone thing. So the G node B and also the core network are 5G. So now we are going to talk about the data collection process and methodology. Um, we basically um, gather information from um, six different locations in the southeast coast of Spain. And we found out, well, this uh, among two, two different carriers, which we'll call operator A and operator B, and this carrier has a 70% of, of deployment in the countries in the European Union, so with the same or similar 5G deployments or infrastructure. infrastructure. So then we can say that our study is, um, can be generalized to the 
5G European deployment. So what we used is Kisainemo Handy Tool, which is an Android application that basically um, captures messages from the wireless domain, from the air, air interface, and makes use of um, two regular SIM, ca SIM cards, in our case, from the operator B and operator A. And the analysis is provided is from the UE side. So this means only the communication from our UE and, uh, and the base station is provided. So we capture the control plane um, data messages following this flow diagram depicted here, where we basically, when we set the airplane mode off, we start gathering all these metrics, all this information, and um, then we generate so some M ICMP traffic, and then we stop the, the metric and the data collection, sorry. So now we'll jump into the security evaluation but before going into the results, we're going to um, go a little one by one on this, um, on every of the 5G features depicted here. So first, um, regarding um, SUPI concealment, which is um, subscriber permanent identifier, um, where 5G expect to um, provide um, concealment or shiffering of this identifier as a feature, then we have the 5G, new 5G authentication, which 5G also introduced this new core network, which implements um, several network fun functions in order to enhance this procedure. And we also have the 5G Gucci refresh or reallocation that in 3GPP, in 3GPP um, there are defined policies which says that these temporary identifiers should be refreshed after the registration procedure and after a service request. This information can be found in the, near, in, in the initial registration procedure in these messages here. Then, as we can see in, in our results, um, we have no protection here. So we don't have 5G authentication and key agreement. And also, the permanent identifiers are sent in clear text. Regarding the temporary identifiers, we have that only these um, they are refreshed after the initial registration um, procedure, but then these this temporary identifiers remain the same. So regarding integrity and confidentiality, we have um, we expect to be secure in the NAS and RRSC uh, messages, which are control plane messages, and also 5G introduced here the protection of the initial NAS messages. So this should this is a novelty. And then also it's a novelty, the, sup, the mandatory support of these um, algorithms to enhance the protection of the user plane data. Also 5G introduced this, this, this algorithm, which, which are 5G NIA and 5G NIA for integrity and confidentiality. And the message um, bearing the algorithms are depicted as well here in the initial registration procedure. So going back to our table, we can see that for control plane messages, no 5G security, security can be found. And regarding user plane, we only found confidentiality protection security in almost every one of the location regarding this one, because this one we find out that is a 4G connection. So here we don't, have, we don't have 5G algorithms. Then this is an image of the, of the, of the tool used, um, where you can see the algorithms um, captured here, and they are 4G algorithms. And finally, we have the security features regarding the UE capabilities, with, with, which are provided by the initial NAS messages. And this basically provides the base station, the algorithm supported by the, by the user equipment. Then we have the UE radio capabilities, and this information basically bears the information to, mm, to be able to connect through the radio access. So frequency, bandwidth. And this information can be found here as well in the initial registration procedure. Then going back to our results, we have that the UE radio capabilities is sent most of the time 
um, after the security uh, mode command, which enables the security for for these um, control plane messages, but not in all the scenarios. So we're still having security here. And then for the UI network security capabilities, we found out that these messages are not 5G security protected. We need to note as well that um, the support, our user equipment supports 5G algorithms, so we spec to be secure. Um, so we spec to, if we have a 5G core, we spec to be secure in these scenarios. And we also have compared our study with a previous one done in the former um, YSEC conference that it's being carried in, in China. And basically, the blank spaces are only considered in, in our work. And yeah, basically, here you can also see that still there are a lot of red um, boxes. So in big terms, the phone vulnerabilities are that the permanent identifiers are sent without protection. We also have um, no policies for temporary identifiers. Then we also have lack of randomness in the authentication procedure because, because it's uh, 4G authentication. Then we have user plane um, confidentiality and not confidentiality because we see before that, I mean, integrity in the table, we see we see that user plane is not protected, but in confidentiality it is. And finally, we have that not all these UE radio capabilities are sent in a secure manner. So this list leads us or an attacker to, to perform this, these attacks. So first, regarding subscriber credentials, we have the well-known well MC catching. So we, with, with the current status of the network, we can still do MC catching. And this allows an attacker to track the user in, and capture the phone number. And also, regarding authentication, you have acti um, activity monitoring, which can lead into a battery drain of the user. And in the table, you can see this um, represented like that. So we can transform these red spaces into potential attacks. Also, regarding the protection of the data, since we have no confidentiality and integrity in some messages, an attacker could do FS dropping and also act as a man in the middle and do data manipulation. So yeah, this is the image of, of the table. Here we may notice that for the um, control plane messages, um, we are still using 4G algorithms, but the information is still, uh, still protected. So we cannot say that an attacker could perform FS dropping and um, data manipulation in these cases, but thus, in other situations, for, for example, in China, an attacker could do it. This is the overall picture of the attacks. And yeah, now the conclusions. So overall, we have um, several missed expectations on the security regarding privacy and anonymity of the subscriber identifiers. So since there are still transferred in clear text and also regarding the temporary identifiers, there are still lack of um, refresh um, with this regard. Also, um, as a, um, we expect to have a security protection of the user plane, but we found out that is not the case as well. And finally, regarding UA radio capabilities, um, they are sometimes transferred without protection. So as a takeaway message, uh, the, the mobile network in Europe is still using 5G non-standalone. And that's why these all attacks can be still be performed. Regarding in our phones, we found this 5G icon. And then the current 5G networks are still vulnerable to 4G. Um, previous attacks. However, we, speak, we expect that in the future, when 5G standalone comes to be deployed here in Europe, um, most of these attacks and vulnerabilities can be solved. So thank you, for, and thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy.
Um, thank you, Akhtar. Maybe we can have one question while we change for another presentation. Hi, Oscar. Interesting work. Um, so I noticed that uh, when you were setting up the problem you described, uh, you showed us how NSA configurations work. But when you go, got to the results, um, you know, that nice big red and green uh, table, um, you said these just aren't 5G compliant. So is this the, is this the case where that uh, some of these operators are trying to do 5G and their implementation of AKA isn't right? Or is this all strictly because um, they're still basically using LTE, AKA and other mechanisms? Yeah, this is a good question. So basically um, the deployment is still not standalone. That means that um, they are using yeah, 4G uh, security. And that's why, for example, in 5G authentication, we have a red because they are using 4G. But in other cases, like in, for example, integrity protection for the user data, um, they are not using anything to protect this regarding 4G or 5G. So there we have a vulnerability. Also regarding um, UV radio capabilities, uh, we found out that this message is sent after, um, before sending um, the security mode command, which established this security algorithms. So in this case, also regarding 5G or 4G, this information is not secure. Um, yeah, also the 5G um, um, permanent identifiers uh, in 4G, there is no policy to establish this in a secure manner. So yeah, this is also a lack of security in 4G. And also the, the, the 4G said that the GUTI or the temporary identifier should be refreshed, mm -hmm. but they doesn't say when. So 5G comes with these two um, policies which says, okay, this should be refreshed after registration and after security, uh, after a service request. Um, so, yeah, it's also a vulnerability coming for 4G. But, yeah, regarding, for example, integrity protection of these um, um, UE network um, capabilities, and this comes in the initial NAS message. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, as well here um, in, in 5G, we expect to have this protected, but in 4G, we know. Thank you. Thank you.